What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. Today we're going to paint the base coats onto our Talarn Desert Raider here. Base coats and shades. So here's what you're going to need. Steel Legion Drab, in no particular order. Agrax Earth Shade, except that these are the paints right in front of me. Raiklin Flesh Shade. Screaming Skull. Celestra Gray. Mornfang Brown. Dryad Bark, Lead Belcher, Rackhearth Flesh, Cadian Flesh Tone, Castellan Green, and last but not least, Balthazar Gold. So I hope you guys like it, and um, for those of you who have Talarn Desert Raider figures, I'd love it if you could post some up as a video response and show me how you painted yours because chances are you probably painted yours a while ago and you are an old beardy guy like me uh, except I don't have a beard so show me your Talon Desert Raiders love to see how you did yours what kind of color scheme you went for when you painted it up back in the 90s or whenever you got them and we'll see you in the next video Hey gang, we're gonna get started painting up this Talarn Desert Raider so the first thing we're gonna do is paint on Rackarth Flesh onto the headscarf, the head wrap. So I'm making this tutorial for a subscriber of mine, a YouTube poster, who's got quite a few videos himself, themselves, the Warhammer Fat Kids, and uh, building up a little Talarn force alongside all the other projects they've got going on. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll help him out by painting up a Talarn guy here. And this isn't, um, this is a plasma gunner, so because of the way these old metal models are, um, they're, they're all, they're all pretty static unless you do some conversion with all this metal. But basically the same thing, I'm, I, I use the same recipe for, for my, um, Melta guy as well. So you're gonna get the same result, it's just that the models themselves will look different. But I think if you, you know, you, you keep the consistent paint colors and patterns and color schemes, then your army will look very cohesive. Alright, so step one, pretty easy peasy. Step two, while we've got the Rackarth flesh out, we're going to mix it a bit with Cadian flesh tone. So you're gonna need your wet palette for this one so that your paint just doesn't dry out. Luckily, there's only a couple of places that we can see the model's skin. You wanna do an even amount of Rackarth flesh to the Cadian flesh tone. And the places you're going to be painting it on are the hands, the fingers. Oh, and I also want to point out that I did base coat my model in black this time, rather than uh, gray. I love gray, just wanted to try something different, so I'm using black primer uh, just to see how, how it affects the way the finished model looks. Next you're going to take this color and you're going to paint it onto 
your guy's face. Or at least what you can see with his face underneath the head wrap. Okay, next we're gonna take Zandri Dust and this will be our shoulder pads. The shoulder pad is where I found the worst of the mold lines, so you wanna be careful when cleaning your models that you get all the, the mold lines that are on the shoulder pads. I don't think I shook my paint pot enough, it's kind of streaky. Paint the other side as well. So the Talarn are a very rare Regiment. Not many people have them <clears throat> in this day and age of plastic and fine cast. So I'm curious and I would love to see how many of my subscribers have Talarn painted or unpainted Talarn Desert Raiders or even vehicles. I'd love to see if you ever dabbled in the ways of the Talarn Desert Raiders. Please uh, film a video response and attach it to these videos. Let me see. Um, what color schemes you guys came up with. I'm always interested in following along other people's work as well as my own. Okay, next we are going to take some <clears throat> Steel Legion Drab. We are gonna paint the shirt. Or the, uh, I guess we'll call it his, his uniform the robes that they're wearing. And you can see that the sleeves are very long. It's very baggy and uh, covers their whole body. It's very... Middle Eastern. I think the aesthetic school is totally different. Like I'm sure they were going for uh, this very specific look at the time. World was a simpler place. Yeah, I read this one Commissar Kane novel. I think it was in the first or I think it was the first omnibus when he's on a starship or one of like one of the troop ships traveling through the warp and um, there's a bunch of Talarn guys and um, their commissar. There's also a bunch of Catechins on the same troop ship. And he said he never cared for the Talarn because they're so so religious, they're a bunch of emperor bothers. I thought that was very funny. Alright, 
there we go. Next we're gonna paint the pants, and the pants are simply Castellan Green. Castellan Green is also gonna be what we use to paint <clears throat> the canteen color on the back. I'm actually uh, halfway through filming a tutorial on how to paint, or the first video anyways, of how to paint a corn world eater. Not a, not a berserker, mind you, but just a, a space marine for anybody who's interested in doing a themed corn army list but doesn't want to uh, just collect all berserkers. Which is kind of uh, interesting, I think, because Berserkers are actually not that great in this edition, I've heard, because of all the changes to Assault and, um, you know, Overwatch kind of hurts them. That's what I've heard and seen from people who I know who play. Um, but they look great. They do look cool. that. We're gonna go to the shoes first and the shoes are the same color as if your guy has a little knife stuck into his like into a scabbard on his back it's gonna be the same color it's also the same color as any straps you have on the front holding the holding the shoulder plates down and the color is Mornfang Brown. So I'm gonna start with the boots Another tricky place where mold lines love showing up is on these leg wraps on the legs. They almost, they're so bad they almost seem like um, uh, mold uh, casting, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for, shifts, mold shifts, when in the middle of the casting process the, the whole mold shifts just a little bit and then it results in everything being off kilter. Same thing happened to me when I bought my fine cast cockatries. Fine cast. So continuing with the Mornfang Brown. Going to paint the little scabbard in the back. You just want the middle of the scabbard, not the uh, metallic parts at the bottom or near the near the handle. And like I said, the little straps on the front of the uniform, right under, right under the shoulder pads. I was reading my uh, Fluff Hunters video, apparently in their war gear, they also have a vest under this outfit, like a flak vest. That's good. Keep them alive. A little bit more of our skin color on it. Okay, if you have any uh, other, if you have a belt or like pouches on your guy, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint that in dryad bark. So the reason we do this is because the Mornfang Brown will pop more 
when you see it next to all of this darker browns. It's the reason why we painted it Mourn Fang instead of this Dryad Bark instead of a darker color because to me the the reddish brown will pop more. <coughs> like it does on the front here with the straps. All right, next step is we're gonna take our rack art flesh and we are going to paint the leg wraps as well as the handle on the knife. Spread the paint out. You don't want it to clump. You don't want it to streak. Any mistakes you make, you can just go right back over because we're still in the base coats. I actually had this idea of possibly doing a series called Imperial March during March. Uh, like an army painting project where I would paint up one of each Imperial Guard unit. I just didn't have all of the stuff I needed. Like I didn't have my Talarn yet, they hadn't come in the mail. I definitely didn't have any Vestroyans. Wasn't even thinking about doing Vestroyans. Like all I had was some spare Cadians lying around. And um, Cadians and uh, Catechins. But I'm glad we're kind of getting to them all now. They're very interesting. All right. Uh, the next thing, oh yeah, the wrapping. On the, on the knife. Actually, you know what? That should be. <laughs> what am I doing? That should be more in Fang Brown. Mistake! Let's take our Rackard flesh and paint it on the skull. It's like that doesn't look right. Eh, yeah, well. Can't win them all. Please, Mini Wargaming, don't take that mistake as a sign of my incompetence. I really know what I'm doing. We're gonna take Balthazar Gold now paint the uh, gold metallic colors. So, this would include the um, the bottom and the metallic pieces of the knife. It's like ceremonial dagger that our guys got. Also making sure we get across the top as well. And the bottom down here. for the gold for now. So what we're doing is we're gonna go over a couple of the other colors. We're gonna take Dryad Bark and we're going to paint it over the Mornfang Brown of the scabbard. I was thinking about whether or not I should keep the Mornfang Brown because the reddish brown really does pop more but I think um, Having it unified with the other with the other dark browns on the belt isn't going to be so bad. And the Morn Fang Brown, when I look at my test model here on the side, it really needs to be on the on the grip. Because the only other color brown to give the hand grip would be um, that that's different, I mean, than the dark brown, the dark chocolatey brown of the Dryad Bark. Or the Morn Fang Brown or the um, I'm sorry, the yeah, the reddish brown of the Morn Fang Brown would be this light brown of his uniform and then it would just fade away completely into it. So a little bit of fixing on the fly. That's how we do. 
in Warhammer. Okay, the next step is we're going to paint the plasma gun. And the plasma gun is going to be painted in a couple of different colors. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to color it in oh no. black. And we're going to use, here we go, chaos black. Or if you have Abaddon black, that's a appropriate color too. Especially if you primed your model in gray or white or a different color. Um, this is, and even if you have painted your gun in, in black, or primed it in black rather, this is a good chance to really solidify the color, make it nice and even all the way around. Um, if you're doing a las gun guy, then don't worry about it, no shame. There's just a couple of different things that you would want to do. And the first thing I would do is get your computer out nearby. If it's, if, well, hello. Your computer would be out unless you're watching this on your phone. And look up Forge World's sniper team. Their Talarn Desert Raider sniper team. Their sniper team, their auto cannons, they're like all the heavy weapons teams. You'll see that their, their weapons, like their las guns that they're holding, the sniper rifles, they're all this very dark iron, like, really um, dark black metallic. So that's kind of what we're gonna do as well. And take Lead Belcher while the black is still drying. And Lead Belcher is already a nice dark silvery color, but we're gonna take it and we're going to paint it onto our model and see if you can blend it into the black a little bit. So we're doing the same thing as, as if we were going to um, paint known oil, but we're kind of like wet blending. And you'll see that if you look at the Forge World one, it looks really almost like they painted it black and then they just dry brushed a metallic color over it. And I'm not gonna go that extreme. I think the colors should be blended and mixed together. It's just the kind of painter I am. So this is gonna be our first coat. And then we're gonna add a little bit more. If you have a stock to your las gun, if you're painting a Talon Guardsman with a um, like with a regular las gun, then you could paint the whole thing black and then do for the hand stock, do something like a reddish brown or like a dark brown, like the Morn Fang, or um, or a dark brown like the Dryad Bark. Either of those will work. Just gonna paint a little bit of skin tone onto his hand back here. So here's our guy so far. What I'm gonna do now is while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna take Chaos Black and I'm gonna paint in his eyeballs. All of the Talon Guardsmen have open eyes. They don't, unless you've got a one of the models with the sunglasses. So you're gonna need to do what I do and just take it and paint a horizontal slash across both, both eyeballs. Just like this. If your hands are shaky, do what I do. Put it, uh, brace it against something like this awesome cork. You can also do is take your black paint and water it down, thin it down with something, or um, thin it down with either water or um, known oil. Okay, so now the gun should be just about dry. Now we're gonna add straight lead belcher. But. We are going to be very careful about where we paint it and try not to paint like you're going to try not to slap it across the whole thing but we want to give our weapons and uh like an aged beaten look so so we're not just slapping it on the goal is we want to do this get, get a very dark iron look without having to wash 
So we're building in the depth. It's a new thing I'm trying. We're building in the depth and the highlights without using known oil. Also, we're gonna take some lead belcher and paint in if you have any buckles, any metallic buckles on your guy, like on his uh, straps that are holding his shoulder pads on. As well as any rivets on your armor. So rivets on the canteen rivets on the sword above and below the design All right we're doing really nicely continuing on we're going to take celestra gray and paint it onto the imperial eagle symbol on the canteen So, Celestial Gray is one of those paints that you want to make sure you wipe off a lot of it before you start because it has a tendency to go on very thick. You just want to brush it on really, really lightly. A little bit too lightly there, so. And a little bit more. Little Celestial now, little Celestial now. And a great place for you to test out is your paint too thick or not is on the wings because then you can draw it out. The, the hard thing is if you have too much paint on your brush, it goes on too thick. If you start with the skull, it clogs up the eyeballs, the eye holes, I mean. And there you go. All right, it looks like we're ready for our washes. So uh, before we do that, we're going to take Screaming Skull and we're gonna highlight our leg wraps. So we're just painting any of the areas that are the most prominent. This isn't essential. Rackarth flesh should be thick enough that it covers all of the all of the gaps and everything, but it's a it's a nice little little spot of this creamy bone color, this off-white cream color. Alright, so we're gonna do the washes and then we're gonna let this puppy dry, then we're gonna come back for part two with the highlights. And the washes are basically Agrax Earthshade. We're gonna to try to get everything except the weapon and the shoulder plates. Yeah, everything else is getting a wash. So you wanna shake it up so it doesn't leave any, um, any watermarks. <clears throat> we are gonna use some Raiklin Flesh Shade for the skin as well, but uh, that one is much less prominent than this brown wash that we're doing. So you want to make sure it gets into all the spaces without kind of taking over and swamping all the free space. And the headscarf. Headscarf has lots of folds, which is why it's really important to go over it with your Agrax Earthshade. Keep going over it so it doesn't leave any unsightly stains. Then when you're ready, come down to the legs. 
Hey, I'm always ready for the legs. That's what I hear, Lewis. Crab legs, that is. It's Sam Choi's seafood buffet. What? Oh, you didn't hear, Warboss? I'm sponsored now. I've got promotions and uh, I've got, got promotionals to make and advertisements to pay for ad space for me to plug their products. Well, stop it. Don't do it on the show. Yeah, oh, shucks. All right, let's get some uh, Raiklin Flesh Shade in before we run out of time on this video. This is gonna go on all of the skin. And I think this will be the last step in the video. It's hard because some of these guys, you only see their eyes, some of them, have their whole faces showing so yeah you gotta just kind of gauge how much to go in there all right so this is part one of our Talarn Desert Raider painted up base coats and washes as you can see we've um, done a really nice job of getting a good smooth even coverage over everything get in there you and um, now all we're gonna do is wait for this to dry and then come back and highlight him up and the goal is to get him looking like our buddy over here. I'll also in part two talk to you about basing options using the Gale Force 9 base and how that worked for me. So let me know what you guys think. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of work on the plasma gun as well. I should mention that so a really simple easy way to get some glowing effects on your plasma without using an airbrush and just kind of doing some very simple very very simple object source lighting. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.